Hello, welcome to another Smile Create Repeat demo video. This one is for the February surprise where we um, explore a, a dip pen and different ways of doing a, a, a pen and ink illustration using a dip pen. Uh, we're going to cover uh, some cross hatching and line, line weight variation and different spacing between your marks to create light and dark. Um, and of course I'm going to show you um, how to install the nib and how to actually use it with the bottle of ink you have. Um, so, alright, let's get started. So the first thing you need to be careful with is these are sharp. It's, uh, it's fine, a fine point, so the metal. Um, and if you're pulling on this and, and all that, um, you could get cut. I have before and I'm sure I will again. Um, so one of your pens already has the nib put in it and that can come out if you want to put in a different nib. Um, the nib is the, uh, the metal piece here. Um, and different pens work with different handles. So this handle and this nib go together and all you do is you slide it uh, right into there and you want to be careful it might be tight um, so I just either grab a sleeve or a tissue or a napkin and I just kind of push in squeezing the the nib pretty tightly and putting it in. Um, it doesn't need to go in all the way, it just needs to go in enough where it doesn't wiggle. And that's all, because you don't, you don't need to do that at all. So, that's how you take it in, uh, put it in. Um, when you're ready to take it out and switch it, again, I either grab a tissue or something. And you could even use pliers if you're gentle on this part so you don't get cut. Um, but you can grab it like that, and I wiggle it a little bit. And then it comes out. So... That's what I do. You want again. You want to be careful because it is sharp, and you want to try not to squeeze these pieces up here because that's uh, made uh, with precision, so it so the ink flows to the tip, and you don't want to ruin that. Okay, and to clean it when you're done, um, I just run it under water, um, and every now and then you might need to rinse it off in a cup of water just to get the ink out and to get it all clean and ready to go again. Alright, so this is called uh, a dip pen because we are going to dip it in the ink and because it doesn't have a reservoir of ink in here so we dip this in ink and then draw with it. We use that up and then we keep going. Um, so I'm going to show you that. And I have a different bottle than what you have in your uh, February surprise just because this is what I have and this is uh, just also just to show you so it's a little easier on camera. So I stuck it in, I put it in way too much and then I shake it off so I don't have too much on there so I don't make a big splotch. So with this pen you can really make nice fine lines. That's a lot, not a lot of pressure at all. Okay. You can make thick lines if you push hard. And you can make varying lines. So if you're making a curve, you can do that. You can do it that way. So there's lots of different things you can do. Different weights. And I like, one of the things I like about pen and ink work is the variation in line and how different artists do it differently and it's it's nice to see um, and you'll see once you're drawing that if you do it enough you'll notice a natural feel for what you're trying to do you'll know that oh I'm just doing some for example some light grass way back there but then there's a tree here that's in front of it so I make it darker and there's a shadow there and now I'm making, that's the dark side of it, and some bark, right? So maybe something like that. Uh, the other thing is um, you can do spacing. So if you're, you have a square, a cube here, and the light's coming from this side, eh, maybe from over here. So this is going to be in the light, the top of it, and this side is in shadow. So I'm just making these lines, and they're all about the same, 
about the same size. I'm not pushing harder to make the line weight make it darker. So they're all about the same. So I'm going to use, do about the same kind of line. I'm just spacing them out a lot. So you can see that this is the lightest, medium, and dark. And that's a way you can do that. Uh, you can show light and dark with just having black ink. Um, you can also, to do our cube again, you can do cross hatching. So that is. So right now, again, both of those sides are the same. So if I go at this side in a different direction, these lines were going this way. If I go in a different direction, now that makes it darker. Another thing you can do is instead of doing the spacing like that, you can do all different directions. And if you don't overlap them, that'll just give it some variety. And that would be something that you would do for texture um, or something like that. So now I'm just going to not do that on this side. And then if you just go, you overlap it either in the same direction or in different directions, it's going to make it darker. And those that's very basic of what pen and ink is about, and um, the basic techniques on how to do it. And then, of course, <clears throat> there's also the just the filled-in black area. So let's say I'm going to do it a little smaller just so it's quicker. That's a horrible cube. So I'll make that side shadow so I can fix that. So that side's that way. And if you make that solid black, that's a nice design element um, if you make it a really dark if you notice, of course, in comic books, if you look at those at all, uh, you'll notice there's lots of black shapes because it just adds to the contrast and drama of it. But if you look at even some fine artists that do pen and ink illustration, you'll see lots of uh, just black shapes to really hold the composition together and bring your eye around the, the composition. Okay. So what I'm going to work on here, and I'm going to try to show you all that together, is I'm sitting outside here, um, and I have a birch tree that I'm going to do a little bit of drawing uh, of, because I think it'll be nice because we have the dark background behind the tree. Um, and I don't know how... Uh, let me start off by saying, I don't know how I'm going to do this. I don't, if I'm going to do more like a sketch, um, a finished drawing, um, it's loose or tight. Uh, it's probably going to be a combination of both just because that's the way uh, I seem to like to draw here. So. so let's see if we can get it. So it's leaning. So this, this the left side of it is in the light. The right side is in the shadow. So I'm going to make that, and there's some texture there, make it a little darker over there, and then we have this in whatever these are, so I'm just scribbling-ish, scratching it in, and that's where I think branches probably got cut off. And so this one I'm doing the lighter, smaller strokes and putting more space in between them because they're dark gray like this one, but this one was in the shadow. This one's in the sun. 
and then on the bottom there's all these marks and I'm going now with the roundness of the tree um, and I'm doing I'm doing pretty light marks because you can always go in and add more marks to it but it's hard to uh, well you can't uh, erase the lines once they're already there so So some of these lines that I'm making now are little uh, imperfections in the birch bark and some of them are just to uh, add value to make it darker and the length of the line is to show the um, the contour of the line and just to have some value. I think I said that already. So now here on the bottom, it's darker, because that's where it's going into the ground. And if you get this ink on your finger, which I did, um, it comes off with soap and water. Um, and I also use, like if my table, my drawing table gets um, ink on it, I've noticed uh, like Windex or whatever that's made of seems to get it off. Cleans it up real easy. So I'm spending a lot of attention down at the bottom because that just seems to be interesting to me. That's just where I, um, I didn't choose to do that. I just happened to, as I'm looking at the tree here, there's the, it's dark, so of course using a black pen, there's going to be more interest in the drawing for me. Where it's darker, um, just cause. Um, and now I've found uh, this must be a, a part of a tree that I cut down earlier. A little stump left here. So I'm trying to, as I'm doing this, I, I'm worried about value, so the light and dark. I'm worried about the direction that the, the shape is, the object is going. I'm worried about how I can use the tool in my hand, this dip pen, to create what I'm seeing. And I'm doing that while I'm trying to talk to you and explain that. Um, and this is a dried leaf. These lines should have been a little lighter, I think. But it's really a lot of, of, uh, of brown. And I'm not quite sure how I want to do that. So I'm just going to leave it. Um, now let me add one more in here real quick. That maybe looks a little bit more like a leaf because there's one laying on its side. And I love looking at people's sketchbooks with pen and ink. So if you have one and you have some amazing drawings, um, please share them with us because I would love to see them. Um, so this is real dark in here. And that's the side that goes down of the stump. And then... Whoa, it is cold out here. My hands are starting to get cold. And then let's see, there's a little bit of... So these really fine lines 
will, sh will come across, once you're done, as light, as a really light area. So, so because I want this, this is some snow that's, that's back there. If this, if the snow is the lightest part, of course it is, then these leaves can't be as light as that. And now that I've just clumped these leaves into one shadow, I'm adding a little bit more in the same direction on that one side to, to make it look like it's curving over, like my hand right there. We can't see it. So I would shade it all here, and then from here to here, I would add more shadow lines because it's curving over and blocking the light. So that's what I did there. So. And so this part is really dark as it comes right up against this leaf and then this isn't there is no real line there it's just kind of goes in and this tree is a little darker but now I'm fighting with the shadow of my hand on my paper okay so this is uh, this was a bad I wasn't planning on doing this part, as you can tell, or I wouldn't have dropped it right at the bottom. I would have put it up a little bit more so I had some room down here. Um, but I think that's a nicer composition had I paid attention a little better before. So that's all dark. So let's make that... So, I want, so I'm doing that because I just want all of that to be dark. And now this line is to show that that's where the leaves are butting up against the tree and that I'm not going to bother with them right now. So I'm using that as a dramatic contrasting shape of where this, the black of the base of this tree is hitting that. So now I need to let's contour this um, part of the roots. And that is, uh, let's see what else we got here. And the, the direction of your lines with pen and ink really help define the form. So by putting that, you could already see that by putting these in there, it really helps curve that part. So in this part, I'm going to bring them in this way to help show that, and I'm doing curves to do that. And they're going against, and I'm pushing harder to the right and to the start, and then I'm less pressure as I go over. Now that's getting up into the regular, into the trunk part. And there's a lot of sun there now, and we have a little branch that's sticking out in front of it, and I love doing branches with a pen because as you push it gets thicker and uh, darker and now I'm coming up here and I'm pushing less and less to get to there once I get to the point to the end of it and this is just a little baby just peeking its head out of the snow so he doesn't have a whole lot of branches. I think we should have one, maybe another one, 
back here and I want this trunk of the birch tree to be much lighter uh, really to stand out as being light so I'm gonna go in and add some uh, value and a variety of lines different directions just to show Um, that that is all kinds of stuff back there, just leaves and twigs and um, bark mulch, actually. And that's a little bit, and now I'm going to put some more on this side. And as you can see, this side is still pretty close in value. To the birch tree. Oops. Just where I wanted it. Okay. So, I, I need to make that even darker. So I'm going to, one, be closer to the line of the tree, because I really want to work on making that, um, the shadow really, a nice sharp edge there to show where the tree starts and this dark background stuff um, is in the back. So also, if you guys are on social media, on Instagram or Facebook or any of those, if you've made something, uh, we again, we'd like to see it, um, and we'll share it on our page too, and uh, just to show what you got, show what you've been doing, um, what what you've created with the with your smile, create, repeat, surprise, um, because this is this is. Um, one way to do this. There's obviously many ways to use pen and ink. Um, and of course your what you're drawing your subject matter will dictate also what you might do and how you would use it. So this is very much a sketch, uh, a sketchy way of doing it. <laughs> Not sketchy way, but a sketching way. And you can see you can make a repetition of pattern if you do that. So. so let's get a little bit more Did that now I'm gonna come up here again and I'm curving it a little more more of an angle than the last uh, column of hatch marks I did because I want those to combine and add some curvature to the tree and now these because it is getting onto the lighter side I'm curving it and spacing it out a little bit more And I'm going to put a couple lines on this, really to just show the, the roundness of the tree. And on these, and there is some variation in value in there, so I'm going to add some of that. And there's more of those, so let's add one here, and this is a good one because this is darker over here, and it gets, it's still dark of course there, but it gets lighter. So I'm going to go pretty light all the way across, and then go back and look at it, and eh, this would be a little darker over here, 
and then maybe there's a little bit more of the stem of the branch piece of it still in there. And we have, it looks like we have a, fortunately, a, a wound or a cut mark over here. So that's there, and then there's some, there's a little, just trying to add a variation to it. So that's the my birch tree sketch. Hope you enjoyed this. And before you go, or before I go, I'm going to show you a couple more, um, just different ways that you can draw with the pen and ink. One of the uh, up, one of my first uh, experiences with pen and ink was looking at Calvin and Hobbes cartoons, um, and his. If you look at Bill Watterson, the illustrator for those, he does an amazing job. Um, but another one is uh, the BFG and Witches by Rod Dahl and Quentin Blake illustrated. So he uses a pen. Similar, closer to this style than uh, the crow quill that you had, the other one in your kit. Um, and he does, you know, it's very loose. Ooh, that was bad. You know? So he does that stuff, and then he just. Choo -choo -choo. Thank goodness he does better than this one. Um, and you also want to, you would draw this out first. So you have some idea of what you're doing, but you do want to keep it, um, or he does, he keeps it real loose and sketchy like this. Um, that, or that looks up. And it's, it's just fun seeing how, how loose his drawings are, and thank goodness someone doesn't really look like that. But that's what people in his drawings look like. It's not great, but it looks like a person walking. Maybe it's windy, you can look his hair's blowing. Guess it's not that windy, because his tie's not. You know, you could do that. Or you can do, um, you can do really contrasty sketches Right? So it could be... So what is this guy doing, right? And part of the fun, if you do... This is kind of a tough... Pen and ink is kind of a tough medium to go take to a coffee shop, but you could do that and then just draw and see what what happens here because this drawing that I just started here I knew I was going to do a big face but I didn't know no oh, what's this hand going to do I don't want it interacting with him but maybe it can right maybe he's got his leg and why does he have right maybe like a button down shirt short sleeve button down shirt and a long sleeve shirt underneath Right, so let's add the buttons, and it's got a little pocket. And see how these are sloppy lines, but the excitement in it is the variation in the weight of the line that I'm making, and how some of them are real light, some of them are real dark. And that's just the nice part about it. 
And that's another nice exercise you could do is just draw something else and how does it interact with these. Um, just as a sketchbook exercise and something like that. So that's it um, for this month. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you learned something. Cross hatching, of course, is you can do it at 90 degrees to each other perpendicular. You can do it at less, and then you can do it again. You know, so if you want to do a scale of light to dark, right? So there's that, there's that, and then let's put another one here. So you have one value, two values, three values, and then four. So, so really that's it now. Uh, thank you again for watching. I hope you are enjoying your subscriptions. Uh, if you're not a member yet, you could please uh, join us, and you can of course give these as uh, great gifts. Um, you can go to our website at smilecreaterepeat.com and uh, sign up or learn more. And if you have any questions, you can uh, post questions in the comments below um, or on all the social media uh, avenues. We're participating in a bunch of them because uh, we want to hear what you have to say and see what you're creating. So please share and uh, have a great month. Talk to you later. Thank you.